I'd like to introduce you to our first keynote speaker, Hideyuki Sasso, our new president of Fujitsu Laboratories Limited. Dr. Hideyuki Sasso is president and representative director of Fujitsu Laboratories Limited, based in Japan. The Fujitsu Laboratories Group is the key R&D pillar of the Fujitsu Group with R&D sites in Japan, the US, China, and the UK. Dr. Sasso was appointed President and Representative Director of Fujitsu Laboratories Limited in April of this year after an extensive career at Fujitsu Limited spanning nearly four decades, in which he held various corporate senior executive management positions as member of the board and former head of several key computing and mobile phone related business groups and marketing, including serving as Chief Technology Officer and Chief Marketing Officer while he was a Corporate Senior Executive Vice President and Representative Director of Fujitsu Limited. Dr. Sasso also served as former head of Fujitsu's Next, Gen Next Generation Technical Computing Unit, which at the time was responsible for Fujitsu's K supercomputer development and business. Please welcome Hideyuki, Hideyuki Sasso. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the first time I'm attending this symposium uh, since I was appointed president of Fujitsu Laboratories in April. I thank all of you for joining us today and welcome this opportunity to share some insight with you on ICT. Uh, where ICT has come from and where Fujitsu is heading. First, I would like to look at this painting by Paul Gauguin, uh, which is considered by many people as his masterpiece. The painting is often described as showing all phases of life. In reference to this painting title, who do we come from? Who are we? Where are we going? Today, I would like to talk about this, the following themes. ICT, where has it come from? And where Fujitsu is heading? Today, a computer is not simply about speed. They are also beginning to undergo an evolution. They are beginning to take on near human capability, such as the ability to understand words and recognize patterns. The pattern by building computer with the ability to conduct and supervise learning a wide variety of possibility become available to us. The photograph in the center uh, shows the match of the Japanese game shogi, which is similar to chess. Because of dramatic advance in computer performance, computer have already evolved to where they can beat professional shogi masters. In this transformative era, we are already seeing the emergence of hyper-connected world in which everything is connected. A wide variety of things and already connected to, to the internet as the internet of things being to spread. In 2013, it was said that 10 billion things were connected to the internet. But by 2020, the number is forecast to grow to 50 billion things, 50. From these things, a huge volume of data will be streaming onto networks in the world 
connected by networks where anyone can easily access leading edge technologies. We need to focus on not just the readable merit of technology itself, but on how technology can be used to generate new value, which is a question of human wisdom and creativity. In the end, what is important is human beings, human being will use technology. At Fujitsu, our focus is on people, and we want to use the power of ICT to create a future that is prosperous and filled with hope for everyone. By leveraging information as a medium and through mutual fusion, value creation had previously been locked within individual industries. It can now be generated in entire new ways. Is the aim of helping our customers and society as a whole to generate innovation, we Fujitsu have proposed a completely new approach. Outlined in this year's edition of the Fujitsu Technology and Service Vision, which we released in April. At Fujitsu, uh, we believe the three dimensions of people, information, and infrastructure will be important element in generating innovation. Next, I would like to brief, briefly share some highlight of Fujitsu history. Fujitsu is now recognized as one of the longest standing IT companies in the world. Fujitsu was established 79 years ago. Fujitsu's parent company was joint venture of Furukawa Electric and Siemens, Fu and G, joint. In 1954, Fujitsu entered the computer business. Though we did not have enough experience in developing computer, we utilized the telephone technology of our telephone switched systems. Overcoming a lot of challenges, our engineer finally succeeded in making our first relay computer, supported by many people in the company. It can be said that this was the start of Fujitsu's long-standing legacy of innovation. When I joined Fujitsu in 1976, more than 20 years has already passed since Fujitsu started its computer business. The evolution of ICT was truly striking. In recent years, with a rapid growth of internet traffic, there has been a need to increase the capability of networks. In early 2000, we developed the FlashWave. It's an optical network platform series, which enables the efficient deployment and expansion of optical networks. Even now, this series continues to maintain leading market share in North America. Furthermore, in 2011, we jointly developed with Japan Research Institute, it is RIKEN, uh, the world's fastest, fastest, fastest supercomputer at the time, the K computer. Continuing to take on the challenge of new innovations, is a part of Fujitsu fundamental DNA. I would like to share some highlight of history of Fujitsu laboratories and some of our technology footprint in North America. Fujitsu laboratories was established uh, in 1968. Kimura mentioned. Uh, in 
1975 in collaboration with Amdal that was based in Silicon Valley, we co-developed the world's first LSI-based computer. In 1988, we started collaboration with some microsystem. Uh, this joint R&D later led to Fujitsu current collaboration with Oracle. In 1996, we developed technology for the world first WDM photonic transmission, which is contributed to significant growth of Fujitsu market share in optical communications. In 2001, we collaborated with Hal Computer Systems and co-developed high-speed I.O. technology for interconnect between servers. Later, this technology led to Fujitsu development of current Spark server chips and petascale computers. In 2003, we developed the world's first palm vein authentication biometric technology. Currently, there are about 50 million users worldwide. For example, in North America, this technology is used by hospitals and at educational site with roughly 10 million users. In the past, also much, for, much of our technology was infrastructure focused, moving forward by leveraging external cap collaborations, we would like to realize human-centric innovation. That brings together people, information, and infrastructure. The three dimensions of the Fujitsu Technology and the Service Division are reflected, reflected in the organization of Fujitsu laboratories. In relation to these three dimensions, plus the common foundation that underpin them, Fujitsu Laboratory has organized in R&D activities around four innovation domains. Ubiquitous computing innovation refers to front-end interface, linking people, information, and infrastructure. Social innovation refers to society-related service, services and solutions. ICT innovation refers to development of new ICT platforms. Monozukuri information refers to development of hardware and software technologies essential to our technology value chain. As a Fujitsu laboratory group, we have three global R&D sites in the US, here in the US, China, and the UK. Each of our global R&D site is striving to increase their presence in their region. Besides North America, in China, we conduct R&D for issues that are particularly relevant, relevant to the region, such as environmental pollution-related surveillance technologies and scanning technology that enable digitization of ancient documents without damaging them. In Europe, we conduct R&D in next-generation ICT field including supercomputers, applications, big data processing, wireless standard, and linked open data. As a Fujitsu laboratory group, we were engaged in over 100 global R&D collaboration project in 16 countries. ICT is playing a truly key role in determining the performance of business and society. 
I would like to explain Fujitsu thinking of how ICT will contribute to our future. We are seeing a number of critical social problems all over the world. Natural disaster, as well as environmental, energy, food, medical, and educational issues. We are asking ourselves how ICT can contribute to solving these social problems. We want to bring the power of ICT to create new medical treatment, ensure everyone has clean and safe access to food, and maximize the opportunity for education. As many of you know, on March 11th, 2011, Japan was hit by a huge earthquake and a tsunami, causing widespread devastation, destroying the lives of many people. Immediately after the earthquake, Japan received amazing support from people all over the, all over the world. And, e and even now, such support continues. Particularly here from the US, Japan re received tremendous on-site support from the US military. As a part of the initiative known as Operation Tomodachi, Tomodachi means friend in Japanese. Japanese people are deeply grateful for this heartfelt international contribution and warm support. Thank you again. Uh, as many of you may be aware, in 2020, Tokyo will host the Summer Olympics and Paralympics. The last time the Olympics was held in Tokyo was 1964. At that time, I was elementary school and I vividly recall that it was the first time I had heard of Santa Clara. Some of you may remember the American swimmer and Olympic gold medalist, Mr. Don Sholander, who was the first Olympian to win four gold medals at a single game. He was a member of the Santa Clara Swimmers Club, which is still renowned and active today, based in here in Silicon Valley. These are some Olympic-related memories that related to Silicon Valley in my mind. At that time in Japan, uh, Shinkansen, it's a barat train, had been developed as the world's fastest and safest high-speed train. Similar to the Shinkansen of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, we would like to build ICT infrastructure that will benefit future generations. Finally, human-centric innovation. People do not need adjust to ICT. Instead, ICT will accommodate people's need. Human-centric innovation will empower people and create new value and new opportunities. Again, innovation is generated by people. Fujitsu would like to continue to drive innovation, those focus on people. In Silicon Valley, for example, in collaboration with Amdal, 
and her computer system, we generate significant innovation in the field of infrastructure. Similar to such innovation, we would like to drive innovation in additional new fields as well. We hope that today's symposium will need to insightful dialogue and discussion as a state in the in this theme and build a new relationship that will generate human-centric innovation. Thank you for your attention.